everyone, so today I wanted to show you guys how I flat iron my doll's hair. So the things that I use are a flat iron, obviously. This is a Revlon one, and it has titanium plates instead of ceramic. I like titanium plates better just because I feel like I can get a better grasp on the hair. But I've used ceramic ones too, and they work fine. The most important thing though about the flat iron is to have one that has different heat settings. You can see mine's on and it's on the lowest one right now. I like to have a fine tooth comb. This is what's going to give you a really smooth result. The finer the teeth are, the better the result. And obviously clips to hold the hair into place. And a water bottle with some water. So just to preface this, I don't flat iron doll hair unless it's really, really bad. So I typically only flat iron dolls that have nylon hair or American Girl wigs, which are Kineclon, but they're a different kind of Kineclon. Basically hair that when it's boil washed, it doesn't do anything. So this means that like Saran hair or Kineclon hair that's on Barbies, which will boil wash fine, like nine and a half out of 10 times, I don't flat iron with because there are some risks to using flat iron, obviously because you have, you know, scorching hot plates that clamp down on your doll's hair and it can burn and once it's burned it's permanent you can't do anything about it however i have flat ironed a lot of dolls probably a few hundred and i've done some of my dolls a few times over because i have a big collection of brats dolls and a lot of them have nylon hair and so do my moxie girls it takes a long time to really figure out a way that works for you and like how to hold the doll and section size and all of that it took me many, many, many tries to get the final result that I wanted. And if you want to see all the different like flat iron transformations that I've done, I'll link my Flickr account below. And if you go to my Dolly Transformations album, I have dozens of pictures of all the different sorts of things that I do, like stain removal, before and after boil wash pictures, and flat iron stuff, all kinds. So just check that out and you can really see the difference. So. Just be warned that, you know, the first few times that you flat iron, you may singe some doll's hair. It's important to take it slow, to start on like lower heat. And what I would do is I would basically, the first few dolls I did, I didn't make them pin straight. I just got used to the flat iron. I basically took out some of the frizz. And then later on, as I felt more comfortable, I was able to get really sleek looks. So what you see on my flicker is like, you know, years of practice. And you know, your first few flat irons might not look this way, and that's okay, you're better off needing to go back and do it again than you know, singeing your doll's hair. And the concept of this is wet heat. And this is why you can actually flat iron doll hair. And as someone who like went to cosmetology school, I do know like what I'm talking about in terms of um, synthetic hair. So it's like a boil wash. The wetness is what prevents it from burning. Whereas if you just take a flat iron and use it on doll hair, it will melt. So that's why it's important to have a spray bottle and I usually always flat iron my dolls right after I've washed their hair. I always wash them and boil wash them to prep them. Especially because the boil wash, even if it doesn't take care of the frizz, it will take care of some of the bulk. So I have two dolls to show you. I have this Jack Specific um, Tinkerbell doll. Her name is Ros Rosetta and you can see her hair is pretty nasty. It's very cheap. And I also have my newest American girl, Caroline. And this is her hair after boil wash. You'll see some before and after pictures of her. I'll insert that into this video at the end. Um, her hair was a lot worse and then I boil washed it and it did help. It took out a lot of it, but the ends are still really nappy. And I also usually do trim um, my doll's hair after I flat iron. Not typically American girl, but with like a fashion doll, I usually will trim because it just keeps the ends nicer. But since they have higher quality uh, connect on hair, you don't really need to trim as much. But she probably will need a slight trim. So without further ado, I'm going to get started. And I usually like to have a towel on my lap too, just to make sure that when I like spray the dolls with water that I don't get soaked. So I like to hold them between my legs. And it's best to like sit on like a flat surface, like not up high on a stool because when you sit up high, it like makes it harder for your like legs to get a firm grasp 
I have that problem anyways when I sit up high and my legs have trouble touching, so. I'm gonna section her hair into really fine sections, like really, really thin ones. And this is the key to an effective flat iron. So, I used to take really large sections, but I learned that just following a doll's like root pattern, or in the case of Caroline, her like weft pattern, that you're gonna get the best results. So my Caroline doll has really, really thin hair. Her previous owner brushed her a lot. They took good care of her, but they just didn't know how to properly take care of her hair. So she has very, very little. And with an American girl, I always use extra caution because their hair is a higher quality fiber, but it's also at the same time, because it's Kineclon, it's still really prone to burning easy. So, I'm gonna spray it down and I like to make sure they're pretty wet. So I will take like a super, super tiny piece of hair and test it. And I always start like kind of in the middle, in the very back row, in a really small section. So if it did burn, it's not like in an obvious spot and it's not much hair. And I start in like the lower half of the hair too because if you need to trim it off. And for Caroline, my flat iron is on like the lowest setting. I do not go any higher on American Girl at all. Like I always keep it on the lowest setting. I would rather have to go over it 10 times rather than even risk it burn because you know, it's not like a Barbie you can't just you know root in a new section of hair. So then, I'll usually like wet it again and just go over it a few times. And you'll notice I'm not using my comb much right now. It's because I'm feeling the temperature of her hair as I like, after I flat iron, I feel like I have better control over the temperature right now. But as I get more comfortable, you'll see me use the comb more in my hands less. So I feel like it's pretty safe right now. So I'm gonna take another section. And it's normal to hear the, to hear the sizzling noise. That's just the water evaporating. Um, if you like flat iron your own hair when it's damp, it's going to do that. Uh, don't flat iron your own hair when it's damp, that's very damaging. And as I'm doing it, you can see that it's drying out. And it's just really important to keep your eye on it and not to like get lazy or complacent about it. Just always pay close attention to what you're doing and the temperature of the flat iron. And don't do this if your flat iron doesn't have heat settings because you will definitely burn your doll's hair because those ones get hot. And some colors, um, it's not even just the type of hair, some colors of hair are a bit more sensitive. And that's another thing too, like for an American girl, I don't like clamp down and pull really hard. Just because, like I said, their type of hair fiber is um, more sensitive to the heat, so I don't need to use the same pressure. But on a doll like my little Rosetta, she, I'm gonna use like a lot more pressure. And, I'll, and I'm done the first little row of wefts. And I'm just gonna repeat the process, follow each row as it's sewn and on Rosetta I'll just be following her root pattern and I like to tuck the hair that I've already done between my legs just to keep it separate. If you're noticing a change in the flat iron just turn it off let it cool down sometimes even at its lowest temperature like if you're flat ironing saran hair the flat iron will just get too hot from being on and you'll need to turn it off and let it cool down. And also, like, on fashion dolls, I don't recommend, like, even on American Girl, like, don't make the hair soaking so it's dripping because you will, like, ruin your flat iron doing that. You can use the wet to straight ones if you want. I just personally don't like those. I don't find that they give me the results I want. But um, if you, if the hair is, like, dripping and your flat iron sizzling all the time, it's gonna eventually, like, you know, die. I've killed a few because I used to use way more water. Okay, so now we're gonna do Rosetta. And she's gonna be a little bit different 
than Caroline, obviously. So again, I'm just gonna try the same concept as I did Caroline. I'm gonna find like a little piece of hair. Now, because she is slightly less delicate, I'm gonna bump my heat up a little bit, not much. And on her, I'm gonna use more tension and I'm gonna go slower because she is less, um, a less fiddly hair fiber. And if you want the hair to have a slight like flip outwards or a slight flip inwards, you can just rotate the flat iron. We are back the next day from the flat iron treatments. I have my dollies here and I just, this is the Rosetta. And you can see her hair is a lot better. It's a lot softer. I had to trim quite a bit off of her. Usually on dolls like this, like a Bratz doll or a fashion doll, like with the nylon hair, I take off about like mm, half an inch just to be sure, just to keep it from frizzing in her hair. The very ends was still like really like just gross looking, but it looks really good now and she's a cutie, cutie patootie. And then, of course, we have Caroline, who's way more exciting. No offense, Rosetta. Here she is. And here is her hair. I had more footage of me flat ironing her. I was going to show how I do it at the top. But basically, um, my camera wasn't in focus, and I don't have a viewfinder that flips out. So I couldn't tell until it was on the computer. So that was a problem. I, When I get up to, like, about here on the head, I basically split it in half and then I just separate the hair up the side of the head in really thin sections paying close attention to the scalp region especially up by the parting where you're going to see the hair when it's flat because this part is really visible and any like frizziness or whatever will show and I didn't trim much off Caroline I just trimmed off like the teeniest bit, like I skimmed her ends. So, and I'm not afraid of trimming dolls. Like again, I mentioned this before in this tutorial. I went to cosmetology school, so I know all about like parting hair and stuff. So that doesn't scare me. But I literally just skimmed her ends, and um, I basically flattened her hair at the top. And anything that popped out, I just like trimmed up to the top of her wig because if it was like really short, because that will just reflect the light and make it look really dull and dry. So, she's happy to be home, and I love her already. So, if you guys want to see this tutorial in written out form and know all the steps, check it out in my Flickr. I'll link it specifically below. And again, I have pictures of all of my different flat iron before and after on there too in the Dolly Transformations album. So, until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.